I thought I would tell the story of how I got ulceration in my esophagus. So I basically like ulcers in my esophagus. So I'm sure you've heard of like stomach ulcers and like, you know, mouth ulcers, I guess. Well, I had that, but it was in the tube that delivers food down to your stomach. This happened my junior year of high school. I started feeling, like one day I just started feeling these pains like in my chest whenever I would swallow. So I thought it was like heartburn or something, but it happened like whenever I would swallow something. Even if it was like liquids. But I ignored it because I'm like, I just ignore pain when it happens because I'm like, whatever, it'll go away. Like I'm not one that's gonna complain about pain because I know people like that and I don't wanna be a person like that. I don't know how long these pains were there for. It was such a long time ago. I think it might have they might have been there for like a week, but every day it kept getting worse and worse at worse. And it was just crazy because I was trying to function so normally. Like I I was so quiet in high school that I didn't tell anyone what was happening cuz I was just kind of like, oh, like maybe I would mention it every now and then like, oh my god, like hurts when I swallow like I had a group of friends that just pretty much like not ignored me but like I wasn't like the biggest personality in the group so it was just kind of like like I know this sounds really sad to say but I, I can say it now I, I didn't really matter I didn't really matter to these people um and it, it's fine and it's fine because I have relationships with people individually and when it's like there's like a group of people with like weird dynamics. It just doesn't really like work out for me. Like I'm, it's harder for me to insert myself into a group, even if I like every person individually. But sometimes people just like, I don't know what it is that just kind of switches. And then it's just like, I can't like get, I can't, I don't know. It was just very strange. I love everyone. Don't worry, I'm not throwing shade at anyone, but like the particular people that I hung out with, love them individually, but just as a group, it was so hard for me to like insert myself. Um, so I'm just so I'm just so much better at like one on one. But anyway, senior in high school, I made a group of friends that I am very comfortable with, and I could tell them anything, and it's fine. I had like different groups of friends too, so I don't want anyone to watch this and be like, uh, "Are you talking about me?" No, don't worry, I'm probably not talking about you. Um, but there was a particular group of people that I would have lunch with out on like the practice field or whatever um, at school and I feel like a lot it was just like one of the things was it was so many people that it was just like hard for me to like I would just you know at lunch I would just like sit in that group and like talk to whoever was next to me so it was like it's one of those kind of situations so you know I would just like mention things a little bit but that you know that's how I was I was so quiet um, and I just didn't share a lot of my life I didn't share a lot of what was happening to me um, and yeah like there's gonna be a lot there's gonna be a lot of other stories if you want to hear the other stories some of it gets really sad some of it gets very dark but I think it's important for me to share like what happened to me during those times because I don't want anyone else to feel the same thing that I felt or if you did I don't want you to feel alone I want you to know that there's someone else who yeah anyway <laughs> um, getting off track yeah no th this happened at night so I went to um, my SAT class at night it was like a night class like on Wednesdays I don't know why I remember that it was on Wednesdays but I can't remember like anything else um, it was on Wednesday nights and I had a lot of friends in that class. My um, my best friend at the time, uh, Maddie, she was she would sit next to me in that class, and I didn't even tell her that like every time I swallowed, it was so painful. I was just like I remember sitting there in the class. I don't know how many hours it was. Like I think maybe it was like like two hours or something, maybe an hour and a half. But it felt like eternity. I was just sitting there, like just like staring like 
like in so much pain but then like I, I would talk to everyone normally i would raise my hand answer questions like normally but like in like i don't know why i let myself do this to myself just like have all this pain internally but i've done that like mentally too so i was just like okay like i don't know i should have gone to the doctor earlier but i was just like okay look it'll pass it'll pass like it's probably nothing it's probably nothing because you know when you're a person you humans in general we think that we're invincible and we a lot of the times we don't think that anything is wrong and we just ignore things because we're we just it's not like we don't care about ourselves but in a way we don't like it like we just ignore pro we think that we can ignore problems and i really should i really shouldn't have done that i really 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 shouldn't have done that um but yeah, like, I don't know, it's kind of sad now that I think about it, and I'm like, damn, girl, like, you, you should have been, I don't know, I feel like I just really didn't know how to communicate that well back then. I remember thinking that I was going to die in that class. <laughs> what a tragedy, dying at school, um, I really felt like, okay, my life is ending. But it wasn't like, it didn't feel like an emergency to me, it, it really didn't, it was just kind of, I was just kind of like, okay it'll pass it'll pass it'll pass but because i don't know it didn't feel urgent like i wasn't like under attack or anything like i knew i wasn't having a heart attack because it related to my swallowing like it felt like you know how sometimes if you eat like a bunch of rice really fast and then you can like feel it going down like when i swallowed it was like i felt something in there but it like was like stabbing me it was like hurting me but I really thought, like, okay, maybe I just, like, have, like, food, like, impacted down there. Like, I just, I have, it, I probably have food down there, and it's, like, hurting me. It was, like, like, as if I had a Dorito chip down there that was just, like, stabbing me every time I swallowed. But then as the days went by, the Dorito chip, like, got bigger and bigger and turned into a freaking monster. And it hurt and it could have been like the spiciest Dorito chip ever because it was so painful and it just was jabbing me and so I went home I went home my mom picked me up and then we were having dinner and I was eating rice because I thought like okay since rice does that like maybe it'll help like push whatever it is like down so I was eating rice and I, I as I was sitting there eating like tears were just coming out of my eyes like I was just like like every time I swallowed I was just like I was like, I would blink and like tears would come out of my eyes my mom was like are you okay and I was like I don't know like what is happening uh, like I told her like I, I think I told her about the pain like a little bit but I was kind of playing it off to be like oh it's not a big deal don't worry about me don't worry about me I'm invincible I'm fine like I don't need to go to the doctor because in my head like I know that going to the doctor costs money and I'm I've always been so frugal and I don't want to spend money on anything um and so yeah since I like my high school I went to a private high school and I knew that costed a lot of money I knew tuition was a lot so that's why I didn't want I like I just didn't want my parents to spend any more money like we live in San Francisco it's so expensive there so yeah then I was I was my mom was finally like okay something is wrong do you want to go to the emergency room and then I was like I should yeah I should <laughs> good idea mom uh, thank God. Thank God. Because, you know, I... Oh, my God. So, my mom ends up driving me to the hospital, um, the emergency room. And in the car, my mom tells me that since I'm in so much pain, that we should tell the pre people in the emergency room that I have trouble breathing because they'll take me sooner. So, when I got to the emergency room, I told them, like, I, I'm having trouble breathing it hurts so much and then the nurse lady was like taking notes and she was like you have trouble breathing or it hurts to breathe because it, it was like hurting me so much like every like you know like it was like painful it wasn't even just like the swallowing anymore it was just like like breathing hurt so much and I was like it hurts to breathe and I explained to them 
it's in my it's like in my chest area and whenever I swallow it's like so in such intense pain like it was like it was like my chest was like trying to give birth it was cr it was just so much it was crazy it was crazy it was crazy like I don't wish that pain on anybody I don't and I was so silent about it for so long they were like taking my vitals and stuff and then finally like they could tell that I was like so I was in so much pain I didn't even want to like I couldn't even like sit up anymore I was just like like holding on to everything like they gave me they got me into a little like hospital room not even like a, a room but like ones with like curtains around it they get like I they put me in a hospital bed like that like I've never I had never been to the emergency room and like been put in a hospital bed before but it was just so intense and then I remember just like laying I remember I was just like laying there and like people were walking by like nurses kept coming in and out and like saying things to me and then leaving and I was just like freaking out like I wasn't having a panic attack but I was just like like I was just worried about myself I was like what's wrong with me like am I gonna be able to go to school tomorrow um, I don't know what's happening um, I have I I was in choir and I had a performance that Friday um, so I was like so stressed about that like uh, like I can't perform like I have homework my homework is so intense I have teachers that I can't let down um, like oh it, I was just like stressed but also like it, there was something that was also calming about being in a hospital bed like okay this is so severe that you're in a hospital bed so you need to reevaluate what's going on in your life because at that time I was so stressed out about everything as a junior in high school and it was in I think this was this might have been in like this this was definitely like second semester so like maybe like January February um like that time period in the spring for sure um so I was worried about SATs I was worried I was worried about AP classes I was worried about so much stuff but this was finally like okay you're in a hospital bed you deserve to just chill out for a second and figure out what's going wrong the doctors kept giving me medicine like drinkable medicine because a pill no thank you not at that moment <laughs> like everything hurt it hurt to even get that medicine down um but yeah they were um so they made um you know i was there for i don't even know how long i was there for but yeah like i had to just be like hospitalized for a bit i don't remember what else happened but i remember my doctor he was like kind of an asshole like he was just like like my mom didn't like him either she was just kind of like like think of like dr house from house md and like but like take away like the funny like sarcasm stuff and just like just his like demeanor like it was like he was like that and it was just kind of like off-putting and I like I didn't really understand his vibe like I didn't I don't know it was just very strange like and the way he would make eye contact with me I don't know like he was just like a weird guy and it kind of made me feel bad that I didn't know what was wrong even though that's the doctor I don't know he could have been I felt like he was kind of like manipulating me in a way like oh well like, you don't know what's wrong like what you know trying to because he couldn't figure it out and it was kind of scaring me that he was like he, he had that tone with me like well like we can't help you if you don't know what is you know like that whole thing like ew grow up like an the other thing is I think he was annoyed because they had to call him over from a different department so they had to get him and he came in and he was like I don't know I I wish I could remember more about it but yeah he was just like <laughs> I didn't like him my mom didn't like him but then like it was really funny because like um we scheduled like a uh not a surgery but a procedure for me like an it's called an endoscopy where they put a camera in there to see like what's going on in there 
and so that we scheduled it for Friday which was when my performance was gonna be um, but yeah so so he was like oh I'm gonna be the one performing the endoscopy and I could just feel my mom's like my mom's like eyes rolling like oh my god like this guy we're gonna have to see this guy again um, <laughs> I don't know he was just so weird I wish I could like explain more of like what I don't know he just he was very off and like he he just kind of seemed a little bit condescending in a way I believe I stayed home from school the next day because I was in so much pain but they gave me I think they gave me some medication to take um, and I was just, I was so worried. I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me and I have to wait another day to figure out what's wrong with me. Um, but anyway, f uh, fast forward to, and I was so, I was so stressed about missing school. Like I never missed school. So it was like so significant that I was missing school, like just for, just because like, well, I, I was in the hospital, like give me a break. I was in the hospital. So Friday rolls around. Um, I go to the hospital, I, you know, before a procedure, like, you can't, like, eat anything or, you know, so I'm, like, and I hadn't really been eating a lot anyway because I was, like, I couldn't, I can't get stuff down, so I was already starving, um, and I had to go, um, I had to get, like, dressed in their little thing, take all my earrings off and everything, and just, you know, you can you have to be completely plain, um, where whatever the thing is um, so I remember they were like sedating me um, and they gave me like the laughing gas and so I always try to be like hey I wonder if I can like um, not fall asleep I'll like you know if I can like fight against it it's always kind of fun when that's happening I've had a few like procedures done where I've had to do that so whatever I have to have a procedure done I'm always like let's see if let's see how strong this stuff really is because you know again like humans think we think we're invisible but uh, invincible <laughs> we think we're invincible but we're really not and we just try to test ourselves so um I remember the um anesthesia anest anesthesiologist guy was just like all right count down like 10 90 and I was just like all right like um but I passed out I felt so heavy and when you're when you're under it's so strange because sometimes you can like hear things and you kind of you kind of get you like you just feel people around you it's weird because it because like at the start of it it feels like you're going into like a trip i guess i don't know i've never done acids so i don't know what a trip is but i assume that's what it like everything just feels so warm and you're just like pushed all the way back down into the core of the earth um i don't know and it felt like when i was under it felt like a weird like deja vu but like I distinctly remember that these doctors were like talking about like perfume like oh like this perfume this perfume like old lady perfume I don't know I don't know if I was like hallucinating though but it seemed like they were because I kind of I remember like my eyes were like shutting but like my eyes were still like a little bit open and I saw all of them hovering over me with their like masks and stuff this wasn't even like a, a like a huge procedure like they just shoved the camera in I think they had to put something in my, in my mouth to keep it open. Um, oh yeah, and they had to stick the IV in. Um, but I think I was asleep at that point. So that's over. I wake up and I'm like, when you wake up, you're so loopy. You don't know what's going on. Three million years could have passed. And I was just like, wait, why am I here? What day is it today? School? I'm missing school? Like. <laughs> I was like freaking out um my mom took a video of me like being like and I oh yeah the, another thing is you have to take your contact lenses out too when you when you um are under you know when you're having like a procedure done so I woke up and I couldn't see anything and I was just like I just saw like very blurry shapes and I was just like but my mom was there and she was like hi and she gave me my glasses and I was just like 
and like I saw all the wires and stuff I saw I looked at my hand I saw the IV and I was like and I was just like am I charging am I a battery that's charging like I was just like crazy and I was just like it was like (laughs) my mom thought it was funny so she filmed me and I was just like you could see like I was just like like I had like my double chin was so big I was just because I was just like Um, so yeah, like, I guess I sober up after a bit, I think they gave me, like, a popsicle or something to eat, like, just very, like, you know, minimal hospital foods aesthetic, um, and then my doctor walks in, you know, the guy who is so, like, condescending and everything, he, he's like, so, uh, we looked into your throat, and I'm just kind of like, okay do you want to like like in my head I'm like okay like come on like tell me like what's going on I'm so like anxious to know what's going on and you're just gonna like waltz in here like and so we looked in your throat like waiting for waiting for me to have a response it's like I can't have a response yet like like I hate it when people are like wanting a response like that like and it's just like when it's just like Okay, you can continue. You don't need me to 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 bring the rest of the conversation out of you. Like, what's my diagnosis? And he, you know, I just hate that. I don't know. (laughs) Side rant. (laughs) But yeah, this doctor was. (sighs) Um. Yeah, and I'm sure my mom remembers this doctor too. But I was just like, okay, like. I was just kind of, like, smiling at him, I guess, like, uh, like, because, you know, at that point, it's, like, I don't know if you're, like, being sarcastic. You're just being condescending. Do you want me to smile? Like, I don't know what, what's the appropriate, I don't know what reaction you want from me. Um, but I was, like, okay, like, yeah, like, (laughs) that's what I'm here for. Like, I know what you just did to me, so want to tell me what happened? Um, and he was, like, so... It appears to be, um, there appears to be some ulcerations in your esophagus. And we're going to give you this medicine. And you should be okay. But we don't know the cause of this. It's a mystery. And there's also a boy who has the same thing um, that we know of. But we don't but we don't know what caused his either and so i'm just like what like it's like okay that sounds reassuring um i have ulcerations in my esophagus and i don't know what caused it um and then i think he went on to say like it could be like some acid reflux thing going on you know it could be from stress i I thought like okay it's definitely from stress so anyway um i go home and I was really bummed that I missed, like, my performance. Um, but it, it was okay. It wasn't, like, a big deal. It wasn't, like, the performance. It was just, like, with my choir. They could carry on without me. It was fine. But they I, they were all worried about me. I got some really nice text messages from them. Um, so when I went back home, I was just, like, on the couch, like... And then the doorbell rings. I open up the, I open up the door, and it's my choir director. He came to my house and he was like, hi, oh my gosh, like, I thought you would look a lot worse. And I was like, well, thanks. Um, I was wearing like my choir sweatshirt just because, you know, I wanted to be like supportive. Um, And it really didn't look like I had a procedure done, but I was like just very like mentally exhausted. And I had like the bandage on my hand from like the IV. So it was like, you know, you could tell it wasn't like I was lying that I was getting medical attention um but yeah my quiet like I hugged him and I was like like at first I was like who is this guy because like I opened the door and he's wearing all white and I was like is this guy a chef and then I slowly remembered because like I don't know I feel like my wheels in my brain weren't turning yet and then I was like oh my god it's Mr. Z like um okay wow he's here at my house and I was like confused but also like kind of happy but also like 
what? Like, I don't know. It's just like, you don't really think you're on that level with someone until they show up to your house because you had a procedure done and then you're like, okay, so I guess this person does care. Um, yeah. So that was like a very strange thing. But yeah, he gave me like a card that like the choir signed, which was really nice. And I knew people were worried about me. I was worried about myself. I didn't know what was going on, girl. Um, but, you know, I told him I'm OK. I just I'm still in pain, but they gave me medication. So hopefully it goes away. And he's like, OK, like, cool. Um, yeah. And so another funny thing is that my French teacher called my mom because I missed class and it was like an important class like and we have we had to watch this movie for class or something because we had to write a paper about the movie so we watched the movie in class but I wasn't here to watch the movie in class so she called my mom and she's like she this this assignment is like so important it's like madame like what the heck like I was just in the hospital but she was like freaking out over me not seeing this movie in class like you could have dismissed the assignment for me but no <laughs> like what that's that's crazy it's just like the most it was just the most random faculty at my school who were like getting in contact with me like uh, what the heck i don't know that was just so strange but anyway um when i went to my french class um when i was finally better like recovered i went to school and um my teacher gave me like a get well soon card and I was talking to her for a bit, and um, we're only allowed to speak to her in French, but she let that slide. I was just trying to, like, tell her, like, I was, like, a little bit better, but, like, oh, uh, like, I can't drink coffee. Um, I can't, I couldn't do, like, a lot of things, and she was, like, she, <laughs> she was, like, do you like coffee for the caffeine or do you like coffee for the taste? And I said, I like coffee for the taste. Like, I'm so weird. I like the taste of coffee. It's not, it's not for the caffeine. And she was like, okay, like you should go to this health store and they have this like powdered stuff and it's like coffee. It tastes like coffee, but it's not like actual coffee and it's pro it's better for you. And I was like, okay, like, thanks for the recommendation. Like what? I don't know it's just so weird like when you come back from the hospital and like how people will treat you um <laughs> like my French teacher is like she didn't care but she also like cared so much that she was like your daughter has to do this assignment like what like when you know like what like you couldn't have dismissed me from that but you also like care and want to recommend uh a beverage for me to drink I don't know, it was just so weird, but anyway, um, I'm trying to think of other things that I didn't say in the story. Oh my god, so I was just trying to think of like things that I didn't say in this video, but I know that I was texting people about what happened, so on my laptop I typed in ulcer to see like what messages would pop up, and it's, I told, I told one of my friends that, um, Oh my god, there's so much here. I told my friend that um, when they gave me the popsicle when I woke up, I told the nurse, this is the most exquisite popsicle I've ever had. And like, if you know me, you don't, you know I don't even care about popsicles. Like, I don't like, I just don't, like, I like ice cream. I'm an ice cream girl. Like, popsicles, what a waste. <laughs> I saw my parents when I woke up and I was trying to say hi to them. But I didn't know how. I was just kind of like. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. And this was the. The nurse. One of the nurses told me that I look like Vanessa Hudgens. Proud moment there. That was so funny. I texted myself a draft of an email that I was writing to my teacher that said, Hi, Mr. Blank. Last week I was absent for two days because I had to go to the emergency room and have a procedure done. It turns out that I have ulcers in my esophagus and I think they may have caused due to stress. Because of this, I have missed a lot of important activities from a variety of classes which have been stressing me out more. I'm coming back to school this Thursday, this Monday and I plan on meeting with my counselor during third period tomorrow if that's all right with you. 
Um, and I'll hand in my paper before the class begins. Oh my God, yeah, that's how intense like school was for me. Like I was so stressed, like I didn't even care that I was in the hospital. I was like, I have to get my homework done. I feel like I should have written like a college essay about that, like applying to colleges. Like this is the kind of student I am. Like I am coming back to school whether I'm here or not because I have to do something. But anyway, oh my God. Yeah, so in that message, I said that I was um, gonna see my counselor during third period but what i really did was get the movie the dvd of the movie from my french teacher and watch it during third period but then i mean i had i had communicated with my counselor like right when i got back to school and i told her like hey um i was hospitalized like <laughs> i am going through a lot i'm so stressed out i just need to talk I, you know blah 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 and then um, my teacher, Mr. Blank, um, went to my counselor and said, hey, like, um, like, he's so sweet. He like, I didn't know he would like check up on me, but he, he like went to my counselor and was like, hey, like, um, I know Jazzy like went to see you during third period. Um, and I just, want to make, I just wanted to make sure she's okay. And then my counselor totally like, covered for me because she was just didn't know what was happening was just like oh yeah like third period yeah 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 and then she and then she um then I talked with her after that and it was so awkward she was like hey so um Mr. Blank said that you were with me during third period but you weren't but it was fine because like I already met with you but I just want to make sure like everything's good and I was like I was like so like my head was like burning like I was just like oh my god like this is why I can't lie to people but I told her I was like so honest with her I was like yeah like um my French teacher needed me to do an assignment during third period but I knew that I was going to meet with you anyway so I just told him that I didn't want to tell I didn't want to you know tell him that I was mm missing his class for another class like I just wanted to tell him like I was like honest that I said you know I was honest when I said that I was in a hospital like that wasn't a lie and she was like okay okay just wanted to make sure because like I didn't know what was going on I was like yeah like oh my god that was like so that was like probably like one of the most like awkward encounters I've had with like a faculty member like an adult in general like like, hey, sorry I lied to my teacher that I was gonna be with you, um, and you, and I didn't, because I didn't know he was gonna, like, come, like, talk to you about it, like, oh my god, the teachers at my school are just so, they were just so caring that, you know, I didn't really realize, like, what I had, uh, with them. I don't know if there's a moral of this story, but basically, um, don't get too stressed out if, if, if you're going through pain even if it's not like significant it could turn into significant pain go to the doctor it you know i know it costs money but there's insurance okay your parents should tell you about insurance because i didn't really know about insurance i didn't know like i don't i don't know like my parents were always like let's save money like whenever we would go to a restaurant um like even a cheap place like mcdonald's or something like we would we weren't allowed to get like soda or something like you know they would always be like you have to get only water because we have to save money so i that idea was always put into my mind like we have to save money we have to save money like that i didn't re that i put my own health at risk because i wanted to save money and that's not good if something is really bothering you you don't don't hold it in you need to tell someone even if you don't think people care they will care uh, I got so many text messages after that whole thing happened and people were like shocked like because I was just being normal so much but I feel like that happens a lot with people even if it's not a physical pain even if it's a mental pain it's it's surprising how people how pe how well people can cover it up don't lie to your teachers about where you are even if you were in the hospital because you don't want to pull all of your cards and then 
be looked at as like insincere even though it was fine for me because everything worked out in the end like I didn't get in trouble for it I, I couldn't like get in trouble for that but um yeah hope you enjoyed this uh story time video I I do have a lot of stories that I'd like to tell make sure to subscribe to me um thumbs up this video it'll help me a lot um and follow me on Instagram at jazzlmao. Um, all right. Ooh, okay. Bye.